One of these pictures is the human brain, and one is the universe. Can you tell the difference? There are a lot of mind-bending theories about our universe, how it came to be and what it's made of, what shape it is, whether it's the only one. We all know about the Big Bang, but what other explanations have physicists and astronomers come up with? Welcome back to Factnominal. Today, we're exploring some of the wildest theories about the nature of the universe. What if we're living inside the brain of some other being? And before we get too far, no, this isn't just some mushroom trip inspired speculation thought up while lying on the ground gazing at the stars. Some scientists really think this could be the case. There are quite a few similarities between our brains and the universe. Both the brain and the universe are made up of complex webs of filaments and nodes that link up at certain points. They both contain trillions of galaxies and trillions of neural connections. About 70% of the universe is dark matter. About 70% of our brain is water. Some research has been done that found that the two networks behave in strikingly similar ways, just on vastly different scales. Trillions of neural connections web and spark through our brains, clustering in different areas in different ways that we don't fully understand. Trillions of stars pop into and out of existence, clustering into different galaxies in different places in ways we also don't fully understand. If the universe really is a brain, and specifically a human brain, it leads to another question. How did this happen? One answer theorizes that as the universe becomes more complex in certain localized regions, matter shifts from chaotic entropy into self-similar organization. Could our human brains be the result of the universe becoming more and more self-aware as we evolved from single-celled organisms to fish to primates to human? In this sense, the reason we can think abstractly and even conceptualize and ponder the universe at all is because our brains are models of the universe. The next question is, if the universe is a brain, does it have a consciousness? This is a tough one to answer because we really don't know what consciousness is in the first place. Alan Turing once said that if you could have a conversation with an AI that was indistinguishable from a conversation with a human, it would mean the AI was conscious. But what is consciousness? Is it self-awareness? Do we have the free will to think what we want, or are our thoughts just products of finely tuned, super complex neurological and chemical interactions within our brains and bodies? There are too many theories on consciousness to get into here, but let's focus on one. Panpsychism. Proponents of panpsychism see the universe itself as conscious. However, they define consciousness more in terms of experience rather than self-awareness. Humans have a very complex experience, fish less so, single-celled organisms even less so. In this sense, consciousness in some form pervades all matter in the universe down to the atomic level. Another theory called Orchestrated Objective Reduction or ORC-OR theorizes that consciousness actually originates at a quantum level within neurons, rather than as a result of connections between neurons. If this is true, then we can extrapolate and say that the fundamental building blocks of reality itself are, in a sense, conscious, scattered throughout the universe, and have somehow clustered incredibly within our own brains. If the universe is a brain and it's conscious, what might it be thinking? M-theory is a unification of different string theories that many physicists and mathematicians think could be the answer to one of physics' most nagging questions. How can we unify the quantum model and general relativity? M-theory could very well be what scientists call the theory of everything. The problem with this gap in our knowledge is that gravity is in part of the tiny quantum world. It's just left out of stuff that goes on the tiniest scales because its force is so weak compared to other forces like electromagnetism and nuclear forces. M-theory supposes a theoretical particle called the graviton, the force carrier for gravity. Gravitons and all other particles that make up our universe don't exist at single points, but rather as tiny quantum ribbons or strings that vibrate in different ways. These strings are coiled up in a space less than 10 to the power of negative 33 centimeters wide and need 11 dimensions for the math to work. M-theory is pure math. The scales are so tiny that we may never be able to physically observe what's going on. 
but the equations are elegant and lots of really smart people, including the late great Stephen Hawking, think it could be the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Of course, because of this gravity problem, some scientists have suggested that we've got gravity all wrong. Do Newton's laws need a revamp? If gravitons don't exist, then what the hell is going on? Based on what we know now, there's around 70% of the stuff in the universe that we just call dark matter, because we can't figure out what it is. Gravity is the weakest force in the universe that we know of, but it affects things on the largest scales. But there are things going on in the universe that seem to defy the laws of gravity as it interacts with the matter that we know exists. Stars moving faster than they should or galaxies being held together in ways that can't be explained. Not wanting to mess with gravity, scientists said, hey, there must be some other stuff here that's causing things to act this way, and named it dark matter. But there are some who think that maybe Newton's laws of gravity is wrong. In the 80s, an Israeli physicist named Mordechai Milgram proposed that it should be replaced by something called Modified Newtonian Dynamics, or MOND. So far, the idea hasn't stuck, but it hasn't been proven wrong yet either. Brain World is another model created to help unify the quantum realm and general relativity, and helps solve the gravity problem. According to the theory, our universe is a spatially three-dimensional membrane or brain that exists within a spatially four-dimensional bulk or hyperspace. It's possible that there are tons of other brains floating around, nearly bumping elbows with ours. Yet, because there's this extra dimension, we don't know that they're there. Brain World is based on string theory, and physicists and mathematicians think it can help explain a lot of the stuff we're struggling with now, like dark matter and gravity. The existence of other nearby brains can impact the physics of what's going on in our own. These brains expand, and they could also theoretically fold, leading to some pretty wild implications for where stuff in our universe actually is. What's more, gravitons, those proposed carrier particles of gravity, could possibly move between dimensions. If we were near a different brain with a higher energy that exists in our own, gravitons might be more attracted to our neighbor and prefer to stay over there. The two brains would be very close, so the gravitons might bounce back and forth between them. In this sense, gravity is actually a lot stronger than we think, but it's just dissipated into extra dimensions. Then, there's the ekpyrotic theory. Instead of one Big Bang, there have been and will be an infinite number of Big Bounces. A Big Bounce is what happens when we take Brain World and see what happens when two brains collide as they move through that hypothesized bulk 4D space. If this is true, then there was never any singularity. What we understand now about our own universe is that it is expanding and eventually will become a cold, empty space devoid of all matter. But eventually, our brain universe will collide with another brain. This will trigger an energy transfer that could hypothetically create another universe or a brain that would have all the characteristics of the Big Bang and the subsequent expansion of the universe, just without the initial assumption that it all came from a singular, infinitely tiny, concentrated hot point. Another theory connected to brain world has to do with white holes. White holes are entirely theoretical mathematical concepts. As the name implies, they pretty much function in the opposite way as black holes. Instead of attracting matter into an infinitely dense singularity due to immense gravity, it pushes out matter and light, preventing anything from re-entering past its event horizon. In 2013, a group of physicists proposed that our universe could have been created after the supernova of some kind of 4D star and its subsequent collapse into a black hole in four-dimensional hyperspace, which created a white hole that spewed out matter from the higher dimension into our three-dimensional space to create the universe as we know it. In this sense, the universe is like a hologram, projected from a higher dimension. This hologram theory works the other way too. There is a similar theory that works the other way. It posits that some two-dimensional world has all the coding and data necessary for our universe and is projected to appear in three dimensions, 
Much like a holographic projector takes code and digital information and projects it into three-dimensional space. Then there are theories about the shape of our universe. These fall under a field called cosmic topology. Basically, topology is the mathematical study of how different shapes can bend and stretch without any cutting or gluing or filling in of holes. Things like Mobius strips and Klein bottles are famous examples in topology. When it comes to the topology of the universe, physicists have three main theories. It could either be positively curved or closed, negatively curved or open, or flat. Imagining these shapes requires a bit of creativity, because with space-time we're dealing with four dimensions. If it's positively curved, it will resemble a four-dimensional sphere. If it's negatively curved, it resembles a four-dimensional saddle, with a curvature that folds back on itself. If it's flat, then it's flat in a three-dimensional sense, which is an equally mind-numbing idea to contemplate. You can think of the whole idea like this. Two rockets flying parallel to each other in a flat universe would forever be flying parallel to each other. In a positively curved universe, the rockets would move apart and then eventually join back together. In a negatively curved universe, the rockets would diverge and never join. Physicists currently like the flat topology of the universe. They've based it on measurements of temperatures of cosmic background radiation, old, old remnants of the time in our early universe when dark clouds of hydrogen lifted in a process called ionization and allowed light to travel through space. However, there's been other research that suggests it may be positively curved based on observations of that same cosmic microwave background radiation. Also, these models are all based on general relativity and the assumption that Newton's laws of gravity are true, which, as we've seen, is complicated. Maybe the universe is a four-dimensional donut or Mobius strip, or some other wild shape that we can't imagine because of this unaddressed split between quantum physics and general relativity. There's a lot we don't know about our universe. Some of these theories are pretty wild. They're based on complex math and require some mind-bending mental gymnastics to even begin to comprehend. Maybe we'll eventually figure it out, maybe we won't, but it's definitely fun to think about. There are tons of other wild theories that we didn't have time to describe. What's your favorite? Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep space content.